going to do a bit of a game with you now. Call it name association. I'm going to give you a sentence, and you just tell me the name that best fits that description, that sentence I give you. And the first one is funniest person in the locker room. Brad Armstrong, when I first wrestled him, when he first started, it was in the Continental. I remember having him in a headlock. I said, look at that girl in the front row. He said, Robert, I barely can see the ropes. <laughs> he wore glasses. Uh, yeah, I, didn't know, I didn't know it was that bad. Uh, the next yeah. one is last man standing at the bar. Ric Flair. Fair enough. Yeah, it's a fine answer. Um, who else am I going to ask? Smelliest wrestler. Oh, man. Smelliest wrestler. Abdullah. N never had that name before, amazingly. Most clumsy or reckless wrestler you ever shared the ring with? Uh, Michael Hayes. <laughs> In what way? He'd just fall over himself or what? Well, he, he just throw his arms around and slap you in the face. He, uh, and that's probably my fault because me and, me and him grew up together. Mm. We, we used to uh, go to the bowling alley on Friday nights, play pool and bowl all night, and Saturday morning would hitchhike to the TV station and set the ring up. I was in charge of the ring, and so I, I hired Michael Hayes on as a ring crew. <laughs> And we used to go to the beach and and uh, do our wrestling moves in the ocean, suplex, slams. Uh, so he thanks me every day for getting him into business. And, and that's how he thanks you, by sl smacking you in the face really hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wrestling, move... wrestling him and Jimmy Garvin, but he always had to watch out for Michael. Michael Michael's a left-hander. Mm. So when he said block to punch, you go to block to right and you get popped to the left. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, we'll move on. The nicest person in wrestling. Maybe even too nice. The nicest. <laughs> I guess they're all pretty nice. Some of them. Uh, I, consider, I consider everybody in the business my brother. Fine answer. Um, the most memorable, uh, most memorable thing you saw happen on Crockett's plane. Well, Crockett's plane, before you got on that plane, you had to, you had to shotgun a beer before you even got on, before you even entered the plane. And, and Cornette, he didn't drink beer, so he had to, he had to shotgun a Coke. And one night, his Coke wasn't cold, and it just foamed all out of his mouth. <laughs> but you had to shotgun a beer to get on the plane. <laughs> Uh, I've got quite a few here. I'll stick it. To, uh, I'll keep it to a few. The most talented wrestler you ever wrestled. The talented. Uh, the most talented. Yeah. Wow. Again, the list is long. Uh, the guys that I've wrestled in my career was, you know, from the Barbarian to to Ric Flair. Uh, all the back back in my day, everybody could wrestle. You know, the, every, even your job guys, which was George South, uh, he, he he was a good wrestler. He was just in a different position. Well, uh, my next question was best jobber slash enhancement talent. The best what? The best jobber. Best jobber. Well, George, again, George Goulis was, was one of them. Uh, George South, not Goulis. No, George South. <laughs> George South. And... Uh, uh, they, to me, that they, we 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 had such we had such a good crew. Mm. Every, back then, everybody knew how to work. Everybody everybody didn't just go out there and run the ropes. You know. Okay, I'll give you a couple more. Uh, the loudest spot caller. The loudest in the ring. Yeah. Uh, we always try to keep that real low. <laughs> No one comes to mind? No. No. Okay, then. Um, let me see. I'll give you a couple more. Heaviest smoker. Regular cigarettes. Bob Armstrong. There you go. Fine answer. Uh, the biggest ribber or the best rib? Biggest ribber. 
there's a bunch of rivers out there. Uh, I guess, again, Owen Hart was a good river. Fine one. And I've written a book about Owen Hart's in the description, the links and everything. Um, best payoff man? Best, but none of them. Fine answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really fine, none of them. Most legitimate tough badass. I know Barbarian's there, so. Yeah. Who's, uh, who's the most legit tough badass? You know, again, I go back to old school. You know, you, you got Robinson, you got uh, Pat O'Connor. You know, th them guys are, 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 are the main guys that just went on down. Mm. There's tough ones out there now, but it all goes back to the old timers. Absolutely. And the very last question. You know, you know, you know now, now, nowadays you hear these kids, well, that's old school, right? Mm. You hear them say, that's old school. In my prime, I didn't have the balls to say, that's old school. But I got my ass stretched. You know what I'm saying? They would have showed you old school. Yeah. Nowadays, nowadays when you hear people say that, you want to just stretch their ass, but it ain't worth it. But old school's a compliment now, where maybe it wasn't back then. Well, you, you, didn't, you didn't even bring it up. Mm. You didn't even bring up old school back then. So, it wasn't for old school. It wasn't for old school. There wouldn't be no school. <laughs> so basically, if you called someone, wow, that's old school, they say, you're calling me old? I'll show you how old I am. Is it that kind of thing? Uh, it could be. Hmm. It could be, but not necessarily. Uh, I'll ask you one more question, and then we'll move on. Uh, the most memorable backstage fight. <sighs> I, I, when I was younger, I saw my brother and Louis Tillet get into it. Louis Tillet wore a mask. And they were in Pensacola, Florida, and they got in a fight in the back by the piano. They rolled up on stage. During the fight, the mask got off and rolled back in stage. And uh, that's, that's probably crazy. That's, that's one of the craziest ones. <laughs> did he? Did all the audience see his face, Louis Tillet, or...? Did he get I, don't away with it? I think he might have got away with it. Hmm. Yeah. 